Have you ever thought about how old the Earth is? This planet we live on hasn't been around forever, but it's still incredibly ancient. It is actually 4.6 billion years old. That's a 4, then a 6, then 8 zeros. It's a lot of time. So much time, in fact, that scientists have to split it up to make sense of it. That's why we have this, the geological time scale. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works. The time scale shows the whole history of the Earth, chopped up into eons, eras, periods, and epochs. They have some interesting names, which we will look at soon. There are these numbers at the boundaries between periods. Those represent how long ago that boundary happened, in millions of years. For example, the end of the Cretaceous period was 66 million years ago, when it gave way to the Tertiary period. You can see that the more recent periods are near the top of the time scale. The oldest periods are way down the bottom. But how did people decide how much time falls into each period? They did it with fossils. Fossils are awesome. They're the remains of prehistoric animals and plants. Ancient bones, teeth, shells and footprints that have been turned to stone. Today you can find them all over the place. In Australia, the rocks hold fossils of everything, from giant kangaroos to dinosaurs. It turns out that we find different fossils in different stages of Earth's history. In the very early days, there was no life at all, so we don't get fossils from that far back in time. When life first appeared, it was in a very simple form called bacteria. Bacteria are still with us, but you can't see them without a microscope. For most of the time known as the Precambrian period, Bacteria and other single-cell critters were the only life on Earth. Bacteria got cleverer and began building dome-like structures called stromatolites. Some of them even invented photosynthesis and used sunlight for energy. Plants use the same trick today to make all the fruits and veggies we eat. Near the end of this segment of prehistory, the first multi-celled creatures appeared. The first animals had soft bodies and looked like nothing alive today. Some of them actually look more like plants than animals. What do you think this beastie is? The Precambrian ended about 540 million years ago, when we suddenly see animals with shells in the fossil record. This sparks the beginning of the Paleozoic Era. We divide the Paleozoic Era into six or seven periods, depending on which part of the world you're from. My timescale shows six periods, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian. You don't have to remember these names, although it might help you in a quiz one day. In the Cambrian period, all life lived in the sea. There were primitive plants and a fantastic diversity of animals. They included worms and even the first fish with backbones. But we know more about the creepy crawlies because their shells are preserved better as fossils. There were some cool bugs in those seas, like the trilobites with their eyes made of crystal. Unfortunately, there were even bigger bugs to hunt them. This creature was called Anomalocorus, and it could grow up to 2 meters long. After the Cambrian came the Ordovician period. Animal life got more complex and more ambitious. From this period we get fossils of squid with straight shells. You can find straight shells like these on a beach today, but the ones I'm talking about were as long as a truck. Try fitting that on your mantelpiece. In the Silurian period, the bugs got even scarier. Sea scorpions were the top predators of the time, and some of them were as big as crocodiles. They hunted a group of odd-looking fish with shields built into their heads, called placoderms. This period was also significant because for the first time, things were happening on dry land. Tiny plants like Cooksonia gradually moved out of the water and started to turn the earth green. In the Devonian period, the descendants of those pioneering plants allowed animals to also get a grip on land. They included the first amphibians, creatures that were at home both in and out of the water. The question is, why did amphibians evolve to crawl out of the sea? It was probably to avoid predators, because there were some pretty scary ones in the water. Duncolosteus, for example, grew up to 10 meters long and had giant scissor blades for teeth. It hunted early sharks and even armor-plated placoderms. This beast would make a great white shark look cuddly. On we go, speeding through time into the Carboniferous period. 
If you don't like big bugs, you might want to look away for a moment. In this period, forests covered the land and pumped massive amounts of oxygen into the Earth's atmosphere. That extra oxygen let insects and other creepy crawlies grow to enormous sizes. Living in the forests were dragonflies the size of eagles, scorpions as big as dogs, and even millipedes as long as cars. All these species died out when the atmosphere became more stable, and oxygen went down to today's levels. As the Paleozoic era went on, all the Earth's continents joined together to make a single landmass, Pangaea. The planet looked something like this 250 million years ago. The continents we know today, including Australia, are fragments of Pangaea that have split apart since then. That was in the Permian period. During this time, most of Pangaea was dry and far from the ocean. Only hardy reptiles could survive in the deserts at the centre of this landmass. They diversified into a wonderful variety of forms, from the sailbacks Dimetrodon to gopher-like critters that were the ancestors of mammals. At the end of the Permian, life on Earth was almost wiped out. We're not sure if it was excessive volcanic activity, runaway global warming, or a meteor smashing into the Earth, but something caused the extinction of 83% of all species. That was the biggest catastrophe in the planet's history, even more terrible than the extinction of the dinosaurs, 190 million years later. Next we shall explore the Mesozoic Era. This chunk of time is often called the Age of Reptiles, because reptiles were the dominant animals both on land and in the seas. It is divided into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Starting in the Triassic period, we see a world recovering from the Permian extinction event. This is when the first dinosaurs appeared in the fossil record. Because the continents were still mostly joined together, dinosaurs were able to walk all over the place and leave their remains in all corners of the globe. Living in their shadow were the first true mammals, our ancestors. They made deep burrows to hide away from dinosaurs and other vicious reptiles. Hiding obviously worked for them, because the mammals have outlasted the dinosaurs. You've probably heard of the Jurassic period, immortalized by the Jurassic Park films. By this time, the supercontinent of Pangaea had split into two smaller landmasses. We had Laurasia in the north, and Gondwana in the south. Gondwana was made up of Australia, New Zealand, South America, Africa, India, and Antarctica. They were locked together as one continent, but were destined for a prolonged breakup. Many interesting creatures lived in the Jurassic, like Archaeopteryx. This animal had features of both dinosaurs and birds, as if it were some kind of hybrid of the two groups. We now know that modern birds evolved from meat-eating dinosaurs. Did it start with Archaeopteryx? In the Cretaceous period, the dinosaurs reached their full diversity. This was the time of giants like Tyrannosaurus and Spinosaurus, as well as many other magnificent reptiles. Australia had its fair share of beasties. This is what we think Diamantinosaurus matildae looked like. The name is a bit hard to pronounce, so most people just say Matilda. As an adult, it weighed up to 20 tons, yet this dinosaur only ate plants, and would have been quite harmless. At the end of the Cretaceous came the extinction of the dinosaurs, and many other animals. A meteorite about 10 kilometers across smashed into Mexico, and all but destroyed the Earth's surface. It plunged the world into darkness, for at least a few millennia. And yet, even as the mighty dinosaurs died out and the whole globe choked, the tiny little mammals survived. Now we're in the Cenozoic Era, the time since the Cretaceous Catastrophe. Scientists divide the Cenozoic into two main periods, the Tertiary and the Quaternary. During the Tertiary period, mammals were finally given room to grow. They radiated out to fill every available niche. Within a few million years, there were elephants stomping around on land and whales cruising the oceans. The Earth itself also developed a recognizable face. As the continents continued to drift apart, they took on the outlines and geography that we see today. Australia had become isolated from every other landmass and set off down a distinctive evolutionary path. We see the results of this evolution in mammals like the platypus, the echidna, the kangaroo, and the koala. Of course, plants like the eucalyptus also evolved separately from the rest of the world. 
It was during the tertiary that this great continent got its unique personality. Finally, after four and a half billion years, we get to the Quaternary period. This span of time covers the development of humanity. Through a long cycle of ice ages, our ancestors endured and ultimately spread from Africa to every corner of the earth. We think the first Aboriginal Australians set foot on this land a few tens of thousands of years ago. They were joined much later by Europeans, and that is where I leave the story. All we see on the geological timescale is a series of names, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, and so on. But when you look at where those names came from and what they represent, you end up seeing back in time. The history of the Earth is fantastic, dramatic, and utterly mind-boggling. If you'd like to know more about the timescale and the amazing history it represents, there are many good books on the subject. Just have a look in the non-fiction section in your local library. You can also find plenty of resources online, but please ask your parents' permission before searching on Google. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck!